arena of competitive sports, we decide who wins and who doesn't by counting the numbers. It's a process that makes history easier to share and then understand. Two, three. Sticking with numbers, you could probably count on one hand the number of people who were happier to start the NBA season than this guy. I love working this job. His name is Harvey Pollack, and he has 88 calendar years behind him. Right, so that's a four. And he counts four, his no, blessings six, every day. Six, seven. I'm the only one left in the NBA today who was in the NBA when the late started in 1946. Three, four, five. Nestled in the basement of the building six, where his hometown team takes the court, seven. Harvey goes to work. Six, six, wait, like wait, he wait, has wait, for close to seven decades. This is Dallas. I love basketball and I love numbers. I love them both. He's the Sixers statistician. I'm known as the director of statistical information. An NBA treasure. And oh, yeah. says he's oh, yeah. one of a kind. And who are we to argue? I'll write them down. Like we said, the numbers are on his side. 1946, when the league started. I'm the, I'm the what they call the last in the Mohicans. Take off one there, it's five or six. That takes care of Jersey. You see, for Harvey, it has always been about the numbers, and he does it by the book, his own. He's the author of one of the NBA's most important references, a Bible of sorts. Oh, well, Harvey Pollack's uh, NBA statistical year, yeah, right. Since 1966, he has rolled it off the presses. My baby. <laughs> It's chock full of the statistics on which the game of basketball was built, and even a few that Harvey invented. Well, the most famous one is the triple-double. In fact, when I went into the Hall of Fame, Magic Johnson went in at the same time I did, and Larry Brown was there. He was at, went in that year, too. So I went up to Magic. I said, hey, Magic, without me, you wouldn't even be here. I got so many people waiting for this book. <laughs> By day, Pollock sits in his office of organized chaos. And that's not what I'm looking for. With papers and books on the floor and glamour shots of leading ladies looking down Jordan, on him. Peters and Natalie. He Boyd. moonlights as an entertainment writer when he's not courtside. Harvey checks his list more than she twice. Should four. She should have five. You see, right, he's so counted eight. on to record history. All right, one. Right. And he's got to get it right. Right. I never use right. pencils. I use pens. I always never use a pencil. Never use an eraser. What I put down, that was it. Numbers shouldn't measure what Harvey has done for the game of basketball. History has always been on Harvey's side, and he knows it. In fact, if it weren't for Pollock, we may not have received the news of one of the greatest individual achievements in sports. That game was definitely the most memorable of my career because I was, had so many jobs that night. It was March of 1962 in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and a guy named Wilt piled up some unbelievable numbers, and Harvey was there counting them all. I let the, the world know I was the first one that told everybody that Will had 100 points. There was a reporter standing there. I walked over to him, ripped out a page out of his book, and I got a pen. I wrote 100. So that's the picture that's in the Hall of Fame. So that was by far the busiest night of my entire career. In fact, when we left the building with my crew to go back in the car, we come up by automobile to Hershey. I could stop at the first bar. I need a drink. <laughs> it will be difficult to imagine a season without the man who has always had numbers on his side. Superstar. But Harvey says that though he's closing in on his own century mark, he couldn't imagine doing anything else. Oh, and one more piece of business before we go. What's your favorite number? 13. Wilt's number. That's my favorite number. Like we said, one of a kind. <laughs>